Here they are, London Esports, a very star-studded roster. Oh, most definitely. I think a really interesting storyline, if we're going to build those arcs right now, would be the fact that Astro at the helm, the in-game leader for London, had his first opportunity in the UK scene under CEX. Yeah. It was LS, Rezu, after seeing him at I-Series, who picked him up for that first iteration where he finally played on a proper team that practiced, that took things serious. And uh, here he is now, you could argue, you know, left the nest, you know, Allowed, oh. to, uh, allowed to spread his wings and fly. Spread his wings and fly. There you go. There Thank you go. for filling in there. But yeah, the roster. Arlis, Astro, Eccles, Fry, and Soulcast. Now, used to be Dom, obviously, known as Dominic, but he's changed his name. Not too sure why. But yeah, I mean, just to go through the, the roster itself. Astro, self-assertive person. Very, like, well, likes being the leader in the team. He's the in-game leader in the server as well. I feel like that role really suits him. One thing quite quickly, Snods. I have just realized London Esports don't actually know how to wear jerseys correctly. As you can see, well, specifically Eccles and Fry oh, have yeah. kind of had a bit of a, a wardrobe <laughs> malfunction there. That's but it's trying to look works. swole, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Trying to stay warm in this winter weather of the 2018 finals. 2018? Well, yeah, it is a 2018 finals, but we're here in 2019, aren't we? But yeah, for the roster, Eccles coming from Fnatic Academy, obviously, well, garnered a lot of experience in that roster. Fry as well, just coming from Epsilon, so, you know, Probably the most amount of experiences of Core 5 unit here, Dinko, but definitely individually they can match. Yeah, definitely much more in terms uh, of head-to-head -head against CEX. You'll have so much more experience here in London and some players that can deal with the pressure a lot more. But uh, Eccles, we were kind of talking about it before, is that really consistent factor. He'll always post the numbers. You can always rely on him to do his job. You can indeed. It was interesting, actually, when the admins came over and they asked for who the player to look out for on the roster of London, you know, I think it was Hawker and yourself who suggested maybe Eccles could be yeah. that player, but for myself, it would have been Ardis. Mm. Eccles, very, very consistent, very, very hardworking, diligent player. He's always going to put up his numbers on the server, communicate well, whereas the man on your screen's now not wearing his cap anymore. Ardis, he can be hit or miss. When it comes to how he performs in the server, sometimes we're seeing 35 frags, you know, massive numbers. Other times, it can just be, uh, be awful, to be frank. Very emotional player, and hopefully delivers here for London. Yeah, I guess he'll never miss, Snods. He's absolutely <laughs> incredible. The Scouse superstar on London eSports. But the team they'll be facing off against, of course, is CEX. Now, they might be named after second-hand shop. They're definitely first-class players, and they've proven that throughout the years. They have a lot of uh, throwback players as well, with the return of Geordie Boy to the hot seat, no longer the coach. He's uh, taking over, isn't he? Yeah, first-class duo as well. LS and Rezu. Well, Rezu, obviously, been in CX now since 2015, time and time again, won, what was it, I-50... I-55. I-55? Would have been that I-56? I think. Was it I-56? I think I-55 was fearless in the boys on easy skins. Either way, he's won... It was I-56. Yeah. He won on a UK LAN, and ever since then, maybe has gone downhill, but he still had LS on his side, and now they have ZNX, Nuke Dog, and uh, your favorite from Ireland, Tinko, that's James B2. Well, he's got to support him, right? You know, he's coming into this. He hasn't really been known too much in the UK scene, so you've got to give him something. He's, it, that makes it interesting to watch him, though, right? He's kind of a question mark. People need to see what he's like, and, and uh, he's, still, he's stepping into a pretty good team, so let's see what he can do. Yeah, speaking of the roster as well, the name, the name that really stands out for me has to be Nuke Dog. Mm. He may post cringy selfies to Twitter, but he definitely posts the numbers in the server. In terms of skill, he's definitely the highest skill on this roster. He is brilliant as a player. Calm, cool, collected, great teammate as well, and he's the one to be looking out for. I happen to think he does very well with his selfie game. Do you really think yeah, so? he's a very beautiful young man. Have you seen his most recent stuff you posted yesterday? I have not. Is it good? It I saw is, his new profile uh, picture. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Oh, yeah, it was, it was a good one. You know, a little bit edited. Uh, you know, lip bite in there as well. Oh, nice yeah. little angle <laughs> raise as well to the side. Well, you know, that's what he does in the server. He brings the headshots and he brings the flare. <laughs> From the angles. So yeah, obviously, they're the players in there. James BT, as I said, not really too much of a known quantity. Z and X as well. <laughs> Alex Webster. Mm. Maybe the cousin to Brandon Webber, we don't know. But Z and X, don't really know too much about him. He definitely impressed me when I played alongside him in UK Pro League. Individually, he's skilled, experience would be lacking, and this is the time to prove if he can uh, handle it with the big dogs. Again, he's a pretty inconsistent player, right? We've just seen his most, if you go by the most recent results, which is what you've got to go by in the UK set, so you can see, you know, he has one game where he's up at the top of the scoreboard with Nuke Dog, and then suddenly he's at the bottom. And it's kind of an inconsistent factor, and he'll have to keep that level of consistency if they want to take a team like London. Obviously, a name we used to be seeing on the roster for CX would be Murky, standing there. Well, he was standing there towards the right, behind the players. Currently has a broken thumb in the hand he uses with his mouse. Not sure what he was up to in his private time to cause that, but either way, we won't go there. Standing up behind the players, now you can see grin in his face. Moods seem to be high in the CX camp. Yeah, everyone seems very happy. And 
That's the big man on the screen right there, Murky. He was one of these players that was actually proving himself to be a very dominant force on the server. We're seeing instead Rezu picking up that orb. And how do you feel about that, Dinko? Are you thinking this actually could inhibit them quite a lot? Yeah, I feel like it will be a bit of a hindrance. You know, Murky was a big star with that AWP. We've seen him being uh, the sort of clutch factor in those big, uh, close games. Um, on that map where I was talking about where they went all three, they had the overtimes. He was a deciding factor as to why they were able to take it over the line, just because he was so good in those big clutch situations with that AWP. And missing that factor, that's, that's got to be a big problem for CEX. Surprising as well to not see Nuke Dog on the secondary up, becoming the primary of Murky, taking the back seat there with the injury. Instead, he's going to be a full-time rifling. Yeah, just rocking the AK, which I think he can be quite dominant with. Definitely a man to watch, but let's see who we've predicted as our players to watch here. We're going to be looking at the statistics, boys. Yeah, as I said prior, artist for me, hit or miss. Is he going to be delivering the big numbers here to push London for a 2-0? Nuke Dog on the other hand, can he try and match that firepower? Yeah, if you look at head to head, the headshot percentage isn't that high. But I mean, if you look at it, you still Nuke Dog has a higher headshot percentage. Probably has a bit of a, a spray style of, uh, style of play because due to the, the lack of headshots and so a KDR. You can see Nuke Dog is going to be a little bit more uh, loose and sort of aggressive. You can see by the KDR, obviously, it's not, not, not that high. So he's going to be an aggressive player with a lot of frags coming in and uh, a lot of impact for CX. Yeah, definitely. Obviously. Where do we go with artists here? This is the, the problem I have, right? Wasted potential, you could argue. There's a few players, well, a lot of players we have in the UK where, you know, could it be lack of funding? Could it be lack of motivation? I'm not sure. But artists for me could be such an incredible player. Individually, he is so, so skilled, but, you know, there's times where he's quick counter-strike to go pro in FIFA. There's times where he'll leave a team <laughs> after a LAN after playing very, very well just because he can't be asked. And uh, I'd like to see him do well here, get some motivation. Who knows, maybe they win it, he gets money gets uh, some fire under his feet and really wants to run away with this whole Counter-Strike thing because he has a very bright future. He really does. And he's also one of these players that is sort of, you know, bred from the Prem. We saw him come in quite a few seasons <laughs> ago, popped out of nowhere. He became Maybe a year ago, favorite yeah. in the studio, really. Everyone loved him. The product managers, the production team were a big fan of our boy Ardis. And the more we learned about this South Superstar, the better he got, and the more teams he transitioned through. If you think about where he's been now, playing teams like Endpoint, he's been all over the shop. He was sort of taken really under the wing of Immy. And I can imagine that he would have learned a lot about that as well, because he's always had the fragging potential, but now he's getting the brains down as well. And that's what we need to see come out from artists here today. Yeah, he's not on his own either. You know, London has a lot of experience in that team that he's going to be able to play off as well. You know, like you said, being taken under the wing of Emmy, he also has the help of like, Eccles and, and Free in that team. A lot of experience built up, like we talked about earlier. So yeah, he's got, he's got the team to set him up. Wonderful stuff. And, of course, boys, we have to find out where this mashup is going to be taking place, what the battlefield will be for this best of three, our first semi-final, as we'll start to delve our way through the veto. And this is where I want both of you to really give me your opinion on this. This is the, the hard part. Whenever you do these yeah. UK matchups, when it comes to vetoes, there's all these roster shuffles, roster changes, Mirage Cash. Overpass, maybe. Yeah. You've got your classic mix Yeah, ball. you do, you do, you know. This is the problem. Obviously, coming in for this event, we've seen London make the recent roster changes with the removal of Stanley and Link. We've seen, well, Murky not be able to even make the land with the injury, so uh, Vito's here now in front of our faces. Nuke Bang coming out from London, as expected. It seems to be their permaban. Yeah. Inferno being a very mixed map pick, and also one where, if you are the experienced team, I feel like you can really utilize your advantage. Taking map control, forcing the T side back on your CT side, and really just showing who's boss on that map. And uh, pick of Overpass. CEX yeah. have been notoriously good on Overpass, especially LS. This is starting to look very familiar. You know, this is essentially the same video that they played most recently. You know, CEX picking up Overpass as their pick, London banning out Nuke. And for, this is a little bit different, though. Dust 2 coming in as the decider map. We do see Dust2 being that decider map a lot of the time. Um, uh, usually it was Inferno. I mean, the last time these two teams played, the, the decider was Inferno. They had a big performance on that. So, you know, London have decided to go for the pick on that one. The band are train here on over on CEX, and Cash coming through as a band from London. We're avoiding the puggy maps, but we end up on Dust2. Yeah, I think it's a smart choice here coming out from London. You've got to think of it this way, right? What has CEX lost without Murky? Well, they've lost their primary AWP. So what are some of the big, big AWP maps which you're going to be scared of Murky on? You're thinking a train, you know, Overpass obviously has come through, but Dust2 would be a big one where 
well, if Rez use Orping, I'm not going to be as scared to go towards A long. I'm not going to be as scared to go for those peaks towards uh, A short as well. You know, go up short, take those jewels towards the A site. You know, I'm not trying to be disparaging. A Rezu, very experienced guy, in game leader, but to be blunt, doesn't have the same uh, skill, frag ability as Murky himself. Well, let's delve into that exactly then, right? Overpass is going to be the first map here. We know London is going to be starting on the CT side. So. Yes. What are we thinking about that? Because for the side of CEX, as you just said, we've got Rezu back on the orb. Now, Rezu wasn't really that big fragging powerhouse. Most of the time, he was purely IGL. It was all about the analytical side of him. However, when he did take a bit of a step back, when he was in CEX a few rosters ago, really, and he was just focusing on fragging, Rezu does have that potential. It just seems like a lot of it was limited by micromanaging other players and focusing on a lot of stuff at once. Maybe, as a one-off event, we can see a little bit the Geordie boy come back, but I, I don't feel like it's going to be too impactful. I think, really, this having Murky yeah. here could have been the chance they needed. Yeah. It's, not, it's not just that, but you mentioned the micromanaging here. We've got James BT, ZNX. I've never seen them at a UK LAN yeah. before. You know, obviously the Epic LANs, etc., where anyone could sign up, John, you're Insomnia as well. You know, when you're qualifying for the bigger events, as they have done, this is where the pressure's on. And I think the micromanaging, as you said, could be a big factor that could impact Rezu's well-being. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like, especially on Overpass, the AWP will be missed from Murky because that's a map on the CT side. You can get very proactive, you can get very aggressive, and missing that factor is going to hinder them a little bit. Yeah, only uh, saving grace, I'd say, is LS is unbelievable on this map. He can be naughty. And someone who gets up to all sorts of shenanigans normally, of course, is SEO, joined <laughs> by the wonderful Hawker over there on the caster desk, because we're going to be getting ready to throw over to them and kick off this opening match. How are you feeling, boys? Feeling pretty good, feeling pretty good. It's a bit weird to have me here and Snod's over there. That yeah. is Isn't strange. Yeah. That is, yeah. It does feel weird being on the analysis desk, actually. It's quite nice, actually. So enjoy casting while I go <laughs> for food. <laughs> Lunch is outside. Lunch is outside. I've already had yeah. it, mate. Already had it. Oh, have you had Head it? of the game. No, I haven't yet, actually. Uh, that's really unfortunate for you. I will. You'll be starving. Um, but yeah, so London CX, the main talking point with people mentioned was murky, right? So that's obviously a huge talking point. From what I saw in the regular season, he was the key factor for every single game. Nuke Dog would always give a performance. Yeah. But Murky, you needed him to come in, whether it was 25 kills, you needed him to be a prominent factor. Yeah. With him not there, I can't help but feel like this is a very one-sided matchup. I, I think I have to agree, especially because, like you were saying, Nuke Dog's always there. You have some solid fraggers, mm -hmm. but it always feels like you need someone to push them over the edge. And I don't know who that's going to be now. Yeah. Uh, who else could step up? I don't know too much about ZNX. Maybe he could be someone that could perform here, but we'll have to see who else shows up from the CEX side. Yeah, I see it's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? Because like, we've, we've heard mentions of Rezu picking up the orb. Mm. Like, I've seen, known Rezu for years. Yeah. He's not exactly your, you know, your orper who goes for picks and influences the map like that, right? He's never been that kind of player. He's your IGL, your captain. He's a great captain. He knows how to motivate his team. He does everything like that. However, giving him the orp is kind of like a decision where you have to help rely on him to just sit back. You know he'll have the orp, but he will not be able to give you the same flashiness that a player like Lezard would to give. That sort of, thing. you know, Smuya as well is a great example. He will not be able to give you that style. He just can't do it. And you even just look at the other team with Astro on the AWP on the London side. Mm. I was looking up some of his stats earlier, and generally AWPers win their opening fights a lot more. Mm. That's definitely the case for Astro. He wins 67% of his opening duels. That's something that we might not see from CEX as much. And as we get into Overpass, let's see what these teams have to show us. Yeah, so we've instantly seen Rezu give the P250 to Nuke Dog. So obviously showing that captain side of it, he knows he can rely on his teammates, gives him the P250, he knows he can trust Nuke Dog. And this long approach coming through, Astro did hear them towards it, which you can see here, he falls straight back. And he does give the toilet control away to CEX. So it's possible we'll see around the world here from CEX. So you can see that player outside of B, it basically gives away that idea to us. However, London, they do not have that knowledge. Yeah, the around the world is actually something I use all the time in matchmaking. Oh. So they've been taking a page out of my book. We'll see if they go for it, though, because ZNX is starting to creep out on towards that B bomb site. This first duel could be very important. If ZNX wins this fight, a rotate could absolutely come through. And you can see he's trying to draw the attention away. There goes the opening kill. The rotate starts to come through as ZNX continues to fight. But they have left three players on their site. It's quite clearly an anti strat The fact that they kept three players on the A site, even though ZNX, you got a kill, he dinked one. James PT is still trying to fight. It was a 1v4, now a 1v2. He's so low. He shouldn't be able to get anything done. Oh, wow. it's nice to hear some screams. Yes. To be honest, it's been a while. 
yeah, it's it's nice to have them actually right there in the studio. We can actually see the players, so we, we'll get to see who gets hyped up after the round wins. But like you pointed out, ZNX probably did his job there, to be honest. The fake was pretty good. He got a kill. He drew some sort of rotation. But London clearly seemed very well prepared for this map, for that first round. And unfortunately, this second round shouldn't have too much interest because with only Glocks, CX can't do much. Yeah, and that man they talked about in the pre-game, it was Ardis. Three kills right there in the pistol. He was one of the key players on that site. So it's a good start for him. And Eccles, he's pushed all the way through B. <laughs> That's so crazy to actually push all that way with the FAMAS and keep going. Like, you know, you're one, you're one of, what, two rifles? Surely yeah. better off just holding. But, you know, get that information, just hold it. Just let your team know, stack the other bomb side. Ooh, good nade from Soulcast. UMP up for another kill. And oh, what a lineup. Get a 4K with the UMP. That FAMAS doesn't come back to cost London as they take their second round win. But we go straight into the rifles in the third round, as has been the case much more often in this new meta. And we're seeing London stick with a couple of their weaker weapons. So the question is, will we see something aggressive come out from them? Right, because usually that is your Bonus round, Ash will be doing that Molotov, which does normally land on the steps. However, we have a bit of a freeze, Ooh. which not too sure if it's actually on the server. It looks like it might have been on the server as well. However, I'm not too sure. Oh, so it actually did just freeze, but it's kept the round time. So it's, the round will probably still play out. There's been no damage unless they decide to restart it. The typical thing is if there's been damage, you cannot restart. If it's been too long, as well as the other thing. But I imagine we'll be getting around restart. But we did see some early you know, implications coming from Astra, though. We saw that Molotov yeah. about to come out. So that typically is your aggressive mid-take that would come through. Yeah, definitely. It, it either could be the mid-take or just going for aggression pressure. elsewhere. Just putting pressure on. You could start to move towards connector. It just gives you a much better idea as to where CEX will be playing from, and it kind of takes away a portion of the map. But we will see if the same thing comes out into this third round because we will be getting a restart through shortly. There we go, nothing too crazy. Back into the action any second now. And again, that is the one advantage that London have. They've got basically full nades. I assume Fry should be buying up the nades now. Never mind, he decides not to, but they've still got good nades across the board. Yeah, but he doesn't pick up the grenades, as you mentioned. It's a bit odd, but I suppose he keeps his cash high for the next round if things True. do go sour here. So that Molotov was used by Astro again. But CX, they battled straight through it. So Rezu, he understands, they probably won't use it. It's just there to keep us away, try and make us wonder, make us use grenades for that sort of thing. Because they should know, or London should know, CX do not have much utility with this third round buy. Ooh, and there goes Ardis, playing very alone in towards Connector. He is one of the recent additions to this London roster, and clearly trying to force the issue early on, but does not work in this round. And now we're going to see Eccles go for some aggression of his own. London, with a man down, may feel like they need to make a play, and Eccles is looking to see if he can find something. Yeah, it's interesting he goes for that short play on his own as well. But I suppose you do have limited manpower, obviously. You've only got two players towards that site. However, London, they should be able to understand. We can probably just leave Eccles there. We'll play retake B. We're more than happy to do that. But on A, you have to fight it in this early stage. So you can see the Brosate Soulcast coming over. Astro Fry, Soulcast. They're going to have to do really, really well here. 40 seconds on the clock. CX, they've got the grenades pulled. Here comes the execute. Yeah, this is looking a little bit worrying for CEX. Rezu, oh, never mind, gets two entries. Soulcast alone anchoring the site with the M4, and he doesn't get anything. CEX just completely overwhelm A, and they don't take a single casualty in the round win. That was just all about winning the fight. Yeah, it's quite surprising, really, to see, because obviously the call was perfect from London. They had that one player playing towards short. He was coming behind quite you know, close behind them as well. Three players inside, but Rezu someone winning the, the firefight, which Ooh. it's not something we normally see. Very late call to buy. Yeah, very late. Fall. There we no go. nades. Yeah, this isn't the best buy. I think, like you were saying, they were trying to save some money previously, so this buy would be okay. And it's not awful, but this time they're missing the nades. Soulcast could be in trouble here as the push comes in. He's stuck at the barrels. So that's the anti-rush smoke that has just come through. It doesn't stop the malls off the barrels. However, it would obviously give you that angle where you can stay behind the barrels if you do, do not get mollied. But the mortar has landed in between the barrels, which is unfortunate. Obviously, that's a very, well, one in God knows how much, really. Ooh. LS actually using that position, which I don't really know what to call that position. I've seen Smoey yeah. use it a few times. I used to use it sometimes if I could, but it's not exactly a named position. No. 
it's it's not easy to call that. You just kind of say he's he's up there somewhere. I don't know. He's think like the self boost. Yeah. Self boost. Yeah. You can do it yourself. True. But a very slow round. CX obviously they had that pressure towards Monster, but they didn't really get anything from it because that smoke came through. They tried to molotov them out. They couldn't do anything. So we're now seeing them resort more towards the actual map control. But it looks like Long will be the battle of contention. Ardis can't quite land the shot on James Beatty there. So that's an opening kill again. 35 seconds left. A site is the pressure. Astro needs to hold it down. Yeah, Astro gets one back, as does Eccles, but the trades continue on towards the A site. Noob Dog is in position, and they have this man trapped. James BT finds him, and CEX should have themselves a wide open A bomb site. London are looking in towards A, but this is where that lack of utility could be a problem. They have to retake without any nades, without a kit, and there are smokes up against them. Solcast starting to sneak forwards, but Noob Dog is here on the other side, and here we are. Oh, Noop Dog gets the kill, and it's all up to Fry to try and find all three players. Noop Dog will fall, but the last two players are in very passive positions, and Fry has realized there's just no way he can clear those bathrooms. He's going to have to give up on the round. Yeah, obviously having no kit does play that huge factor into the round. But you see, he's kind of wary about a player coming from behind again. So this is potentially that effect that Zadnax, even though it was the pistol, they understand he'll probably be lurking behind quite often this game. So Fry, it's already in the back of their minds. This is only the fourth round of the first map, and they're already thinking there could be another worker trying to push for that late kill, even though it was a 2v1. But CX, they seem to be doing well into this mid-round, into late situation where they do seem to be making, whether it's the correct calls, but they're winning the firefights as well. Yeah, that's another important part of it. And as was kind of pointed out on the desk, CEX definitely like to play overpass. This is a map that they lean in towards much more often. So I'm sure another part of it is just they're much more comfortable on this map. And interestingly, they're going to hit this B bomb site very, very quickly. And they're going to have a great time. It's quite worrying that Molotov keeps missing. So it's not quite landing actually on to, all the way through the barrels, but it's landing mm. right at the front. It did the same thing when they came out earlier. So later on in the game, that could be an issue for CEX. Obviously, not mattering right now. They got straight into that site for free. Nothing to worry about. But it is a bit concerning. Because this is a map, as I said, they do play it quite often. So they're actually trying to use that as a separate boost just to get a better angle on it. It's quite good, but no exit coming from short. Yeah, CEX should probably all just exit together after they start to clear this position. And Fry has actually been chunked down low. Great shot from Rezu as he starts to get the exit kills needed. And they are going to continue to fight. CEX pushing further forwards. And London only have the USPs and that one M4. But it doesn't look like we're going to see any exit kills. Yeah, just the one that Rezu found. Really lovely shot as well. So Rezu seems to be on it at the very least for this game. But it's interesting, though, especially with London starting on CT. We saw that anti strat come through on the pistol at the very start. At least it felt like it. Since then, though, there hasn't been quite as much coming through. Obviously, we've only seen really, I'd say, one full gun round, at the very least. Because mostly it was that bonus round third, and they bought in. Monster Rush will come through. The anti rush smoke has come through again. So Dom, he can play behind these barrels with no issues. However, that does mean the bridge battle needs to be won. Ooh. Oh, what? Fry gets a double kill there. Easily done. Makes wow. it a third. Fry is just dancing around the smokes. And Rezu is nowhere near the action. He gets left in a one versus five. And that looked like it was going to go OK for CEX. They were gaining ground towards the site. But the kills just don't come through at all. Yeah, because they understood immediately that smoke comes through in front of barrels. There'll be one on site that we put down ourselves. And then from there, we can fight straight up through towards bridge. However, that side smoke is missed, as far as I'm concerned. Normally, that lands a bit further in, in between the sandbags and the actual wood on site. Instead, Fry gets that little angle, which you're not going to check for that. Simply put, it's, it's such a weird spot. Three to three. Another clean round, though. We saw CX win a five alive that first gun round. London do the same now. Ooh, double nade. Page. Yeah, that's oh. doing a lot of damage. Rezu and James BT both down to around half HP. They will continue to regain control of mid, so it's not too big a deal. They haven't lost that portion of the map entirely, but as CX look in towards A long, Rezu will be low as he leads the charge. So the big thing about that damage, though, is M4 to the head now will immediately kill three of those players. So no matter what here, this battle will come through. No flash actually being used, and... That's what happens. You don't flash that angle. The first player gets the free kill. The second one comes through. You can't do anything about it. 
So quite poor display there. And they actually dropped the bomb, but I wouldn't say it's a defendable position. The positive for London is they stay nearly untouched in these opening fights. Ardis has taken three damage. That is it. And the flashbang is just about good enough for the kill. Ardis not exactly looking comfortable, but the spray connects. The bomb has been recovered, but CEX needs some kills. And here we go. James BT gets one back. He's going to look for the further fights. He knows Ardis is stuck on the right hand side and Ardis could be isolated here. Yeah, they do get the knowledge that LS was storming at Pyway. But unfortunately, James BT last life, he might be able to catch Ardis on the way out. But it doesn't look like it. that smoke perfectly placed, gave him enough time to actually get to that cubby. But Ardis is in a position where he can still be taken out here. He does get the kill. He shouldn't be able to get anything else from this, though. Astro's here. There's also another player in toilets. The rotate from Soulcast is coming through as well. And a very nice one from London, ultimately. They play very well together on their A site, I think is the best thing to say. Yeah. After they got the two-man advantage, it always felt like they were kind of in control of the round. Ardis here with a, a bit of a sloppy spray down. the Freiburg yeah. is what we call it in the industry. I mean, he got the kill. That's all that matters. Yeah. And he's decided to go for the MP9 now. Maybe he knows the MP9 hmm. spray a bit better. So the money on CS was a bit weird. So obviously we saw everybody did fall. But there's two players who had different cash to the others. So they bought AKs to try and get involved in the round, as James BT does right there. So that's a nice trade to find, especially because you've lost a player with what? A pistol, not even armor. So 4v4, four four four, obviously, it does favor the T side a bit. But it really depends what do you do with the fact that you do have that you know, map power potentially in your favor. Because right now, you have to rely on those AKs, right? That's, that is your only way of getting any picks. Obviously, the Deagles can come up with something crazy in certain situations. Would you like to see them send the AKs in first or the pistol players? Or does I it feel not like matter? Nuke Dog should lead. Yeah. He's the one who does not have armor full stop. At least if LS, you know, if ZNX dies, LS can pick up that weapon and still do quite a good job with it. Mm -hmm. However, Nuke Dog, no armor, you kind of have to hope he goes for that shoulder peak, headshot instantly. Otherwise, he probably doesn't get the kill. Yeah. But at London, they seem so willing to stack a bomb site in this matchup at the very least. Like they seem to be predicting the actual call, whether it's Rezu's calling or just in general how they feel CX play the map. Yeah, they seem to have this fully on lockdown. Eccles gets the first. Ooh. Ooh, the kills come back. The AKs get it done. And now the B bomb site is looking very vulnerable. Ardis trying to stop the cross. There's no nades left, but Ardis not able to connect the shots. 25 seconds and there's the kill for ZNX. He picks off Ardis and Astro Ooh. also goes down. Great shot from ZNX. And CX will be loving that round win. Very well played from Zednax. He understood that he was 5 HP and he just played the headshot and was perfectly done. But it was crazy good. That trading on Monster was beautiful. The guy, the guy behind him actually covered perfectly. He knew there will probably be a player peeking as soon as you get contact from the other side. I'll cover that side. They both get the kill and ultimately they get the round. And a pause does come through. Which I imagine is actually a tactical from London's side. We see, see Emmy being quite vocal over there. Ooh, and something we haven't really seen come into play is those orbs. Rezu finally yeah. going to get that out. Yeah, it's been one of the... Well, obviously, that was the major talking point, wasn't it, really? The desk. And the orb comes through from yeah. Astro, too. So, ninth round, we're seeing both teams decide to pick up an orb. Overpass, obviously, is a fantastic map for an orb to get involved in. I wouldn't say that Astro is as flashy of an orb as, you know, I was suggesting Smooth or that yeah. style anyway. I wouldn't say he's that kind of orb either, but I know he's capable of landing flick shots when needed. Yeah. Astro doesn't take the opening fights yeah. too often, but normally he will win them. That's what the stats say. It's so, smart player, yeah. really. I think, yeah, I think it's, it's more smart. He's not going to take too many unnecessary risks, and that's what we see here. He's actually just kind of helping Ardis out. Ardis with the aggressive position. As he he double needed. Moving in towards the B bomb site. This is very, very early aggression. Soulcast low on health in towards oh, no. the barrels. Molly comes in. He has to reposition. He's forced into the open, and that allows the opening kill to come through. Trades continue towards to be psyched. CEX gain control, and the big flank is coming through, but it's not going to be in time. Yeah, that was really good. I mean, they've understood that Dom has been at the barrels every round, time after time. And it's finally about time they decide, let's just double nade it as soon as we come out short. There's so much damage, he gets isolated again, that Molotov came through. It's still not quite landing at the exact bit, but it's enough to make him reposition. And that's perfectly fine, because we saw him just then, he repositioned, short was perfectly open, they just took him down. And this has to be a save. Even though there's two players low, learn that it's not worth the risk. You've got an AWP in play. So CEX, it was a very good round from them. In terms of decision-making, they understood exactly what they wanted to do. 
obviously it was London who took the pause as well. So even though another team takes a pause, you can still treat it the same. Yeah. Well, it does look like Astro will be fine saving the orc. Ardis might be in... Oh, oh wow. Zed next dies to the bomb, so I think huh. Ardis will be fine on the other side. They get to save the two guns, but the money still is not great for London. And here's that replay. LS just dancing around the site. It was actually Zed and X who got that final kill to help him out there. But it has been a, a very back and forth start to this game. That's part of the reason why we didn't see the orbs earlier, is the fact the money wasn't really there for either side. And this time, it's London's turn to have a decision. Yeah, so obviously James BT comes in as a stand-in. This is actually a tech pause, just to clarify, in case just so team people don't wonder if there's actually a tactical coming through. James BT came in, obviously replacing Murky. He's on nine kills right now, nine to four. ZNX was another player which we mentioned on the desk. I mentioned he was inconsistent, right? He's a bit flary. He has one really good game, then he'll be bottom the score the next. This game, six to four. Both him and James BT providing so much for the team because everybody else in the team has died seven times each. Which obviously, if you just you know, if you want to just correlate all the stats, you just say every time Zed next and James BT die, London win. <laughs> like yeah. if you want to correlate it that way. Obviously, it doesn't always match up, but right now that is a you know an instant like, bit that we can just look at and just decide that could be a thing. So London don't actually force into this. They keep the open M4, but they just get just what a CZ P250. There is armor and Eccles though. Yeah, they couldn't really get a great buy if they went for it. So I don't mind the decision to take a save here. A couple of nades deployed in towards mid. Eccles will try and get up close, but he will be hearing these steps in towards top connector. Now CEX slow down, though. They start walking forwards. The rotation seems to be coming through somewhat. LS doesn't spot the man on the other side of the smoke, but he needs to be aware. Eccles is trying to check it. It's free kill. However, there's no knowledge whatsoever those players through toys until now. Rezu with another kill, actually winning the instant firefight. Ardis did have an M4 in that situation as well. Fry, he did get the kill. That's what matters. 4v2, bomb is down. Nuko taking a lot of damage there. It's all on and Zed next. One of the players who's been playing really well for CX so far this game. He's got three players to find, and there is another flank coming through. Eccles will be coming in from A long, so ZNX needs to speed up this plant. Fake plant comes in. He's trying to play for the frags because there's so many players he has to find. Size to push aggressive, but the flank is in position. And it's Eccles to come through with that AK. London tie up the scoreline. And again, this has been a very back and forth start to overpass. Yeah, so Eccles, that CZ kill was absolutely huge in the grand scheme of things. He managed to get another kill with the AK as well. And right down, we saw him cap off that round with a 3K. So obviously he was mentioned as one of the players to watch as well. Eccles and Ardis were the two from London. And CX actually take this round on the chin, except LS doesn't seem to have much money. Hmm. Compared to everybody else, like there's a clear difference. And I'm not too sure, he might, maybe he was just low on cash from the previous round, because obviously he, you get 1400 for losing. So the Deagle buy makes sense for that, I guess. Just seems a bit weird that there's not much of a spread. I mean, either way, he's not going to be getting much into the next round mm. unless they get this round win, which could still be a possibility. We'll have to wait and see because Ardis is again playing aggressive in towards A long. He's going to need some assistance from the site as the peak comes in. Ardis Ooh. lines them up. That is incredible. He gets all three kills and this round is almost over. Said next catches Ardis there. Maybe a bit too much aggression from Ardis at the end of the round, but I don't really blame him after finding those opening kills. And ZNX picking off a couple of players here, but it will not lead to anything as London secure the round. You could really see the confidence from Ardis there, couldn't you? He gets yes. the first three kills, he's like, I'm going for the fourth. <laughs> like he's, he's known as that kind of player. He's very confident on the server. He's very confident in general, really, from what we've seen. He's very willing to go for that similar style to... I'd say similar to Thomas, so he understands like he'll go for the eco kills if he if he sees players on pistols. He understands I'm much more weaponized than they are. Yeah. I'm going for that fight. First bit of aggression here from Astro with the orb. Ooh. They lined up as well. There was a chance of the collateral, but he just didn't, couldn't get the shot off. Yeah. Rednex is playing really well. I almost wonder if the Molly kind of masked his vision there, because mm. that, that that was a slow reaction time. But like you were saying, good kill from Z and X. Still three players stacked on this B bomb site for the CT side. They were going for a boost, but ZNX finds another entry. Nearly gets the third, but it's Rezu to find the trade. And Fry isn't going to anchor the site, only gets the one kill. And the trades continue to favor CEX towards B. 
And Alice did actually fail to get the kill onto Nuke Joe just then as well. So they know exactly where he is or where he was, rather. So this should be the score tied up again. I don't know how many times we've seen this score go back and forth so far. It feels like every other round is going back the other way. It's just a matter of which team can get at least, what, two rounds in a row? But it's getting to the point now where if you get the two rounds in a row, you probably won out of the half. Yeah. We, we are into the really late stages of this first half now, so the money side of things won't be as relevant. London's economy is still a little bit shaky, though. Astro could buy the AWP, but he may want to drop an M4 for a teammate. We'll have to look into that into the next round, as it looks like Ardis will be in his hidey hole. He's been here a couple of times throughout this matchup, and I don't think Nuke Dog's going to find him. So the one M4 gets saved, and we'll see how much investment London put into round 13. It's such a weird position to be in, because obviously, no matter what on the CT side, you do feel like the Seas will have more money. In this back and forth battle, you feel like they'll have more. London do invest, so I think Astro dropped an M4 for oh, Fry, yeah. but decides to go Glass Cannon himself, which, understandable decision, obviously. Glass Cannon Orps can still get that job done, right? Rezu does have the AWP on the other side, so that, I believe, was Astro's AWP picked up. So the question is, will we be seeing the AWPs come head to head? Because we haven't really seen it much from Rezu, obviously, with it. Astro, we saw last round try and get involved, but he couldn't quite do it. Yeah, Rezu, I think, had the AWP in the previous round as mm. well when they were pushing the B site, but he, he almost used it more like an AK. He was kind of using it just following up his teammates at, at medium range. So I guess if he can land the shots, it, it's going to work okay for them. But Astro playing it at much longer range angles over towards A long. We're going to see Nuke Dog on the other side of the map this time around, not the lurking from Z and X. And this time, Rezu leads the way. The AWP doesn't get the opening. The reaction time not quite there, but Rezu goes for more aggression, and he gets the opening kill onto Soulcast. A bit of a surprise coming in early doors, but Ardis has returned the favor. It's a big kill to find for Ardis. So it's typically, as I mentioned, Z and X was that B site lurker, typically, for CX. Nuke Dog is always the other side. So as soon as you take out the player on the other side, you understand. He's probably there alone, which means you can see that rotation. It was towards B from London. Oh. However, you'll hear them now running up highway. It's going to be too late for him to get onto the scene here. He's already low as well. Ooh. Insta headshot, no chance to do anything. As you were pointing out, those rotations have generally been good for London, but this time it seems like CX have finally adapted. Astro looking for the shot, and he finds it on towards LS. We go into a 3v3, but the smokes are still up in towards Dumpster. Flash deployed out towards Bank, and London are going to need to get a move on. Half the time on the bomb is gone. They've got to go forwards, and they realize that. James BT gets the kills, and he makes it a second. Again, just frantic frags coming through, but it favors CEX this time around, and I think that might be the straw that breaks the camel's back. I think London's money is gone. Very unusual to see the actual you know, retake actually come through there. Because obviously there was no kit in play. As you mentioned, when they were actually pushing in, there was already 20 seconds gone. Surely you save the three weapons, understand your money is not great. But instead we see the situation right now, which will be potential for CX to win their third round in a row, which I think will be the first time for a team to do so in this game. A very strong end to the half for CX if they can get this through. London obviously not much invested in, so only three P250s had that B stack coming through. However, it's just a matter of time, really. Like we can see on the map, it's more of an A-side default anyway from CEX. They threw some grenades towards B. Ultimately, nothing really happened from it. London, they have to find some info. The question is, how long will they wait with the players close there? Because as soon as it gets to about 45 seconds, you generally feel like it's going to be an A anyway, because the B-side usually does some kind of pressure. This should be a free round for CEX. Yeah, they continue to creep forwards. It's surprising to see James BT alone in the bathrooms there. Mm. He, he could have easily been caught off guard, but luckily for CEX, there's no one here. So they are going to have a free A bomb site, and this should be the round basically over and done with. London start to rotate up now, as you said, with about 40 seconds left, but it's just too little, too late. They are going to stick together, maybe try and overwhelm one man. But realistically, this is CEX gaining control of this half. Yeah, we should be looking at an 8-6. to six. The question is, will London be able to get any sort of kills from this? You can see they're trying to say, come boost towards this side, but 
you're not really going to get anything done with that boost, if I'm honest. Like, the gun actually sticks through the wall, <laughs> which we've just seen there. Oh. <laughs> Quite unfortunate, obviously. But you really can't expect to get many kills here. It's just going to be a case of, can we hold them close to the bomb? Nuke Dog. If they were to push in late here, they could stop him, because he'll take damage from the bomb, obviously. However, I don't think they did enough damage. Should live. Ooh. That would have been very close. Their money's fine anyway. We're yeah. going into the last It's just round. one casualty. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't much. It's not enough there. London will be buying, but the same can be said for CEX. We'll see full nades on the T side. Rezu has the AWP as well. And again, it's actually ZNX and James BT leading the fragging numbers for CEX. They've continued that level of form we saw towards the start of this map. And CEX all leaning towards the B site. They want to go for another fast B push. There's only two people on this B site as well. Eccles is already playing towards retake. He's stuck behind the smoke. Dom is on his own. Can't really get anything done there. Eccles gets that kill through smoke. But ultimately, you've got to be thinking CEX favor the situation. Eccles will be forced forwards. They now know where he is. A second smoke deployed to deny him. They may try and go for that boost just to get any way into this round. And sure, there's Ardis coming in from behind, but Eccles is caught on the boost. Now they know there's a second man here, and it seems like CX should have this half in the bag. Having said that, Astro gets one kill and a second with the Org. There's another man into water. He may not expect, Ooh. but he finds the third. Noop Dog now, the last man left, gets one for free. And it's into the 1v1. Arnis is going to lose out. Great shot from Noop Dog, but that should have never come so close. I'm surprised Astro was able to keep getting those 1v1s over and over again. Like, surely at some point you think, OK, he gets the kill on Rezu. Why don't we just double face it or, like, triple face it? There's three of them in the water. <laughs> But nine to six for CEX. Ultimately, if you think about how that first, what, 12 rounds played out, it will usually favor that T side in that constant battle back and forth. The money will also be slightly better on the T side. Guns are cheaper. You don't have to spend as much on the grenades. CEX looking very strong in that first half, really. If you think about the players that we didn't really expect to perform, ZNX, James BC, we're kind of wondering what will they do this matchup? Doing very well. Nuke Dog is positioned in towards mid on the A side of things. So this is a three-man B stack with Rezu not too far away. If London do go for this B push, then they could be in real trouble. You can see Rezu kind of playing in between everything. The tape will come through, but LS, he just faces it. So there's no flash for the actual push in. All the blocks get up close, and it's all sorts Ooh. of trades, but Argus finds a quick double towards the bomb site, and Rezu wasn't here in time. Ooh, there's the shot he needed. Argus gets put to bed, but it's all up to Rezu now. He's got the kit, but he's got two players fighting him, and London managed to frag out on that B bomb site, despite the fact CEX had a fair amount of information. Yeah, it's a very... Considering the situation from LS getting that opening kill as they were trying to be flashed out, surely you just see there's a guy with a flash out at Monster. Yeah. Surely you just go, they're probably coming short. I've peaked Monster, but they just couldn't hold them back. So next to no investment this time from CX, it's going to be a charge at mid. Ardis would welcome this sort of push if he was close enough. He's turning straight around. He's going to get involved. All the Mac 10s get to get a lot of money. Ooh. One AK kill stolen away there by Dom, but other than that, it is the MAC-10s getting it done, and they have enough money now where they can absolutely take this bonus round. <laughs> they don't have to upgrade anything because they can still buy into the next one, so we will see the MAC-10s held into this round. CEX should also be aware of this, though. They just spotted all those MAC-10s in towards mid. They should be aware of the possibility of the MAC-10s being held into this round. And the question becomes, can London close the distance? The other worrying bit about this for CX is the lack of head armor on all the players, too. So obviously the MAC-10, it's not normally a one-shot headshot unless you, just, you only have Kevlar. And a CT, you don't normally, you don't need head armor, really. Like, you're against AKs normally, you'll just think, okay, I'll die one shot in the head, no matter what. However, we've got a situation where we might see some of those players get taken advantage of. I believe LS is boosted with that Silence M4 which they drop off of just as they might have got contact. This timing is going to be unfortunate. Oh, James BT, he's going to have to do it all, but he just can't do anything. It's chased down by those fast Mac-10s. They've spotted the other player, too. Rotex starts to come in, and Ooh. LS does get a couple of kills. Oh, great shot from Nuke Dog. He is really showing up. 
And it's all up to Eccles in the one versus two. This looked great for London, but the fake plant is good. Gets the first, not the oh. second. ZNX finds the trade. I think the truck ended up yeah. blocking some of those bullets, but that really came down to the wire. I think it was a situation where obviously the truck blocked some of the bullets. But as well as that, it was working both ways. Like yeah. You saw at the end then there was a bit of too many sparks compared to what would normally show up. But it was just ultimately the Galil, I suppose. So if you had an AK, then you probably think he does get both of those kills fine. However, London, you've taken down four players there. You already had money from the previous round. You can buy again. CEX, we see the damage that was done. Even though they won the round, is it, there's an XM in play. Yeah, Rezzy's resorted to the auto shotgun, which I've seen him do that a few times, actually. Yeah, this not isn't, it's not a bad position for it in towards B, but if he ever has to rotate, that's when he's yeah. not going to be able to have as much impact. I guess by that point, he's going to hope to try and pick up someone else's rifle. But the, the XM can be somewhat useful. Obviously, there's a couple of maps where it's used much more, obviously on Nuke, but don't see it too much on Overpass. So we'll see what can happen as CEX are taking a very safe approach on their CT side. After they nearly got caught towards A in that previous round, they decide to just play back from the bomb site, and James BT should have spotted the first man there. Yeah, I believe he did. If he didn't then, he did now. That nade is going to come right in, though, but he misses. They're actually going straight through this. It's a quick charge. There's a player truck, but do they know? He was stuck behind that smoke for a slight bit. Ardis didn't check it properly. LS gets that kill, but he does get taken down. 4v2. A site is free. But Nuke Dog and Zednex, they both get involved. It's 2v2. Yeah, this could go either way now. They're going to charge back in. Nuke Dog continues to hit headshots. Astro gets, or Soulcast gets one back, and it's up to Z and X. He creeps around, finds the kill. The CEX are hyping themselves up. They take another tight round into their favor, and London could have had that one. They had the 4v2, but CEX just seemed to hang on in these rounds. I don't think they expected them to be out that quick, right? Because it was two players pushing through bank that quick to, you know, consider how fast they took the bomb site itself. But obviously, when you're winning, or getting rounds down to a 1v1 like that on the T side, and you keep getting plants especially, you can't help but feel like, let's just buy. We'll probably we'll be able to break them. They won't have much money. Ooh. But the big thing was they, they did save the orb. Rezu now has it. And the buy for London is very, very bare bones. Not mm. too many nades, a couple of Galils. Echoes again with that CZ. And if London lose this round, then CEX could come out to quite a convincing scoreline at this point of the game. This really could be the round that changes the game. Neither team with any money in the bank. Whoever loses this is unlikely to buy into the next. So a lot of pressure on this round. Yeah, you mentioned that potential of the scoreline being, you know, it, it's the worrying gamble you pay, isn't it? Like you keep going back forward, you're like, these rounds are so close though. It's like, you know, it's like one bullet can make the difference. But we're looking at, if this goes 12-8, to 8, we're probably thinking 13-8, because London will probably take one eco on the chin at the very least. And that's you know, a big comeback to have to make as well. It's not a position they probably expect themselves to be in, either, the other worrying part. Ooh. OK. <laughs> I feel like you should know your teammates are in bad toilets there. <laughs> so they ultimately, they, they get info there, but I don't think they were spotted by the A players. Like they're playing so far back that it doesn't really matter what CX do. They'll just play from site. There'll be a quick rotate in the form of Rezu to either bomb site. But you can see CX on B. They decided to play much further back. Some info was found towards A then, but it wasn't really much. Like you know, 25 seconds yeah. here. This is gonna be really late. This is just a contact play. The one flashbang comes in. That's all they have. And Nukov in position to come and shut them down. Two kills there. Nearly gets the third, and the trades are good. James BT shuts them out. And as you were pointing out, that first flashbang needed to land. Otherwise, they're all just filtering in from the same position, and that crossfire was deadly. It's the fact that it was the first flashbang and the only flashbang. Right? It had to be perfect and it just misses, right? You get the perfect crossfire, as you mentioned, play out towards Freiburg, play it close. There's not much you can do, and by the time you've got through that wall, the reinforcements have arrived, and then they just keep taking them down. Obviously, London, they take a timeout because they're in a weird situation now. That round was not close compared to the previous ones. It means they have to take the Zico. And obviously, that means we'll probably go to 13-8. CX have a chance now to build up some money. We can see Nuke Dog picked up an MP9. The money still isn't great, regardless of how, you know, we might think that round was clear, you know, a very one-sided one. But they have to rebuy all those grenades, but it's kits as well. They've all got head armor too. 
So this should be 13 to 8 unless London come up with a miraculous one. Yeah, they're going to need a little bit of luck and a little bit of skill, I guess. Maybe even some mistakes from CEX, and this could be a mistake. They're coming into connector, but Nuke Dog there with the MP9 should be able to shut it down. The Glock is not going to be favored in this fight. Astro trying to see what he can do, Ooh. and Harvest oh, actually Ooh. gets the kill. There's a second. I'm surprised he even comes out with two kills there, but Astro seems to have lost his gun, gets the P250. Again, not really going to have any chance, and the round goes as we expected. So the fact that they forced two rebuys is actually kind of big, though. So obviously, Rezu has plenty of cash. He should really drop one across here, just to make sure that everybody has full grenades, or at least you have four players with full grenades. But instead, we see him keep his money high. So this round could still be troublesome. If London win this one, CX will be on a very rough buy next round, regardless, which you wouldn't expect, considering it's, what, four rounds in a row? Yeah. It's, it's a very weird situation to be on this CT side. It's so scary. The economy is so fragile. CEX switching up their hold towards A. Mm. They're actually committing towards A long, which is quite rare on Overpass to have these aggressive positions. You can easily get kind of caught out in the open without being able to fall back, but the fights are about to come through. James BT gets the first kill, looks for the follow-up, and there is the frag. Now he's going to buy himself some time, but Rezu gets caught off guard. That's the AWP not coming into fruition, and that leaves James BT stuck towards A long. Astro can just hold that angle. Oh, I was going to say, the key battle there was Eccles. He heard one player rotate off. He thought, maybe they're going for some info play through Monster. He checks it, wins that fight. 3v2, London finally have an advantage in this situation. So Eccles does have this sight, but he's not cleared water yet, and it depends how far forward can ZNX get before Eccles even checks it. Doesn't have any support right Ooh, now. Eccles no. is alone. Oh, He's wow. got a huge play in mind here. ZNX is going to stay in the barrels. This could be massive. The bomb will not get planted. ZNX denies him. He knows that Eccles is in the water, but ZNX is buying time for his teammate. Eccles trying to come through, and ZNX is going to buy time. But James BT falls. ZNX gets the trade, and there it is. ZNX makes the play beautifully done, saves the AWP, and that was really impressive. Very well played for him. He understood the grand scheme of what I could play here. It's not just get that first kill on the player who was in the site. He just thought, OK, I'll wait for everybody to arrive. And he, he put all that time for James PT. And James PT didn't really get involved much. I mean, he pushed through that smoke, did some damage. But Zednax, the man, them two as a combo this map have done so well. I think they've got 38 between them. And the flash doesn't connect, but James BT just wins the fight. Fry finds the trade, and London pushed in towards B short. And again, early aggression from both teams, but it looks like it will just be a 4v4 played out unless Rezu gets this shot. And there it is. Ardis pushes alone, and the rest of his team were moving over towards A, where LS is waiting for them. He's going to bide his time, but he doesn't know where they're pushing towards. Oh, this is so awkward. Soulcast makes noise. LS gets the free frag. Trade is found so again into a two versus three london could still pull this off but cex have the advantage kind of feel like rezu's kills with the orp this game have all been within six feet <laughs> pretty much <laughs> pretty much all of them like shotgun orp kills it's kind of unusual so the position that nuke dog has on short he's right outside the door but he's not watching towards monster is the concerning bit here which means that you have to have either one of the a players play a bit deeper and potentially be looking towards that B site. Perfect place to do that right now would be Rezu, just because he has an AWP. He can play on the steps near Maze and actually watch towards the site. But instead, London managed to get to Monster. They've walked out. This should be a plant, but Nuke Dog should hear it. And they actually were crouching across as well. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> He's shot at a non-existent head <laughs> and given away the play, which means they don't get that free plant either. They understand somebody might be on short. Nuke Dog will peek it. They're already low. But the plant and the smoke should come through regardless. Ugh. But ultimately, Fry cannot do anything there. It's yeah. match point now for CEX. This game was so... If you think about, what, the first 20 rounds, how many of those rounds went down to 1vx? Whether it was in favour of CEX or London, like, no matter what. This game could be very, very different. Yeah, Fry at the end there was just stuck in a smoke. Players on all sides, wherever he exited, he was basically done for. And as you were pointing out, this game was really, really close at the start, but CEX have just run away with it in this second half, thanks to some of those very, very tight round wins. It's 
definitely a good sign for CEX, but it's still not exactly as convincing as the scoreline may look because of how many of those close rounds have come through. And they have still got to get one more round to push them over the edge. LS taking the secondary AWP for the team, playing in towards the bathrooms. James BT there alongside him. And London are looking in towards this A side. Yeah, looking to try and sandwich those players. LS did turn around. That's another AWP kill within a short range for CEX. No matter who's opening, apparently, they will try and get that kind of kill. James BT, he's in such a big position here. He needs to be on point with the way he moves around these toilets and maneuvers. Because you'll hear these grenades being pulled. If he goes around, he should be able to get two free kills. Oh, yes. James oh, the oh, what, what just <laughs> happened? Eccles gets the oh. kill, and James BT will not be liking that one. Oh. Nuke Dog is sitting on the other side of things, but he doesn't get the chance to try and trade from his teammate because he assumed that James BT would have had that in the bag. That could really turn the tides of this round, but kill, ZNX again looking on point. Nuke Dog holding with his AK, and CEX regain the man advantage. Rezu comes in with one of his own, and it's all all up to Soulcast to try to save the day. Gets the first kill. He's a man in towards Struck, and there it is. ZNX fittingly closes out the round and map win for CEX. 16 to 8. It, that's a scoreline that we probably wouldn't have expected, right? But it's just the fact that however many of those rounds went down to such close situations, we could have seen such a different game in terms of scoreline. But ultimately, CEX, they've impressed me there. They've played really well in terms of whether it was actually how they played as a team, but the individual star power coming through, ZNX, James Beattie had so many good rounds. Yeah, and I, I always feel like this CEX side were, were generally pretty good in terms of that team play. Maybe sometimes it was just the individuals not quite being as good as some of the other teams, but here today they were winning a bunch of their fights. As we said, I think ZNX finished as the top fragger. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was someone that we were looking towards to see if he could step up for the team. That comes through for them, and they get the first map win, but Overpass generally has been good for them. Now we need to see them win on another map.